Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and finalists, and to all of those of you joining us from across Europe and perhaps even further afield, a very, very warm welcome to the Life Awards 2020 edition. Now this year, it's all digital, so a little bit different for us. Our priorities this year have changed. Our focus has shifted a little bit, but we are still concentrating on a greener Europe. And I hope you will find this award ceremony this afternoon inspiring and enjoyable, as well as interactive. Now, this year we have, of course, three main categories, nature, environment and climate, as well as a citizen's prize voted for by you, the public. So that is still open. You can go there and make your vote known. My name is Jennifer Baker. I am a Brussels based journalist and it's my privilege to host this event. I'll be throwing a lot of facts and figures at you over the next hour or so. But of course, the main focus will be on those great finalists. The Life Awards is part of the EU's Life Programme for Environment and Climate Action. And I would like to thank our hosts today, of course, the European Commission's Executive Agency for SMEs, ESME, in collaboration with the Directorate General for the Environment. Now, although we've been moved online by circumstances, there are a lot of advantages to that. And one of those is, of course, that Although we can't meet in person, we can all interact online. So, of course, you can follow along on Twitter or on social media using the hashtag LifeAwards20. Now, that hashtag is going to be very important over the next hour because we want your thoughts and your opinions. And there's even a prize for those of you using that hashtag. We're going to use an interactive tool called Slido. Now, I'm sure many of you are already familiar with it, but just in case you're not, let me take you through the steps. You don't have to download anything. Just grab your tablet, grab your smartphone, or you can even do it on your browser, on your laptop. Simply go to slido.com or sli.do. Once you're there, you'll be asked to enter the code. Enter the hashtag LifeAwards20. Right, let's do a quick warm-up poll to see if everyone has got there. So you'll see a question which says, where are you joining us from? This is, as I say, because everyone can zoom in from wherever they are in their homes and their offices. Uh, Brussels, obviously, we're here in Brussels. But let's see, uh, we've only got one vote in, so I'm going to give you all a few minutes just to say where you're from. I hope everyone is engaged. I hope no one's going to say just, I'm sitting at home. Uh, I hope you're all actually enjoying it. Have we got any more? More people are saying they're from Brussels. We've got one person from Germany. You can say the country or you can say the city. I mean, or you can be creative. Maybe, maybe you're watching from the beach, although it seems rather unlikely. So we've got France, Croatia, Bulgaria, all represented. London in the United Kingdom. Someone's watching from their sofa. I uh, thought that might be the case in a, few, in a few situations. Lyon in France, people are watching from home. Oh, home is becoming very popular. So as you can see in this word cloud that is growing, we have even got, oh, we've got, it's moving too fast for me to keep up with it. Thank you everyone very much. Vienna, Rome, Portugal, Lyon in France, Spoleto, Estonia, but Brussels, Belgium seems to be the leader as well as home coming a very close second. So. Let's move on to a couple of statistics about this year's competition. This afternoon, we are honoring 15 projects out of the 156 projects completed in December 2018 and 2019 that have most benefited the environment, the conservation of nature and biodiversity, and boosted the fight against climate change. So I'm just keeping an eye on those votes. I can see huge numbers of you zooming in from all across Europe and indeed further afield. So thank you for that. Keep those coming in and keep an eye on Slido throughout the rest of this afternoon's ceremony as we will be coming back to it again and again. Now, in the next 60 minutes, we will find out which of our finalists has won their respective categories of nature, environment and climate action. The entries to these categories have been evaluated by our expert jury. You can see there we are very grateful to them. We have David Sassoli, President of the European Parliament, Ambroise Fayol, Vice President of the European Investment Bank, and Luciana Mew, a PhD candidate from Imperial College London. And you will be hearing from all of them as we go through our categories. They'll be telling you what it was about the different finalists that caught their eye. So, as I mentioned, 
they are our expert jury, but we also have a broad jury made up of all those people from all across Europe, so you can go and vote. So you will see the 15 finalists if you go to lifeawards.eu. You will see a selection of them. You can click on it, read about the project, and decide whether you want to vote for that one or not. Or maybe you want to vote for more than one, but you will have to send your email address. So don't forget to check your inbox and verify your vote if you want it to count. We will have the results of those, so there's not too much time to lose. Get your votes in. Now we come to the important part, the official opening of the ceremony. And to do that, we are very honoured to have the European Commissioner for the Environment, Oceans and Fisheries, Virginius Sienkiewicz. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And on behalf of the European Commission, a very warm welcome to the 2020 mm. Life Awards. Today is a bit of an experiment. This is the first time we have tried the awards in this format for obvious reasons. But let's make sure that the distance doesn't get in the way of the recognition you deserve. Today is all about you, your efforts and your achievements. So let's make sure it remains a celebration. Life is always a cause for celebration. It's been a corner store of our nature policy since 1992 strengthening protection for biodiversity since the beginning, broadening its range of support in 1996 and supporting climate action since 2014. In 28 years of existence, it co-funded more than 5,000 projects. It invested more than 4 billion euros to protect the environment and the climate. And working as a catalyst, it mobilized more than 9 billion euros. It has never been afraid to change and it keeps on growing. For the next multi-annual financial framework, the Commission has proposed a budget of 5.4 billion euros. That's an increase of 2 billion, for a very good reason. In the new format, LIFE will also include support for the clean energy transition. But let's go back to nature and biodiversity. LIFE support for nature protection is highly visible. I know how much LIFE has done to help Member States implement legislation like the Birds and Habitats Directives. And that is also true for the marine environment. These projects have created a vast fund of knowledge which anyone can draw on. And every single one has a particular value. But some are especially successful and they deserve to be singled out. Which brings us to today and the awards you are about to see. I won't tell you who the winners are. But I can assure you of the one thing. All of these finalists have already made an impressive contribution, bringing tangible improvements to our environment and our economic and social fabric. They really are Europe at its best, passionate, inventive and determined to deliver change. Congratulations for being part of that and for all your contributions. You are helping build the Europe that we need. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Well, he didn't give anything away in terms of the awards, so we are moving on to the first category. I hope you are watching with bated breath as we are going to soon reveal our first winner. Before we do that, please keep your device to hand because we have a Slido warm-up for you and you can use that hashtag LifeAwards20. The first category we're looking at today is the nature category. There are more than 5,700 Natura 2000 sites, and in these locations, more than 740 species have been supported thanks to 1,754 life nature projects. So I did promise an interactive afternoon, and so to warm us up for this category, we're going to take a closer look at just one of those 740 species. So we're going to play a video to illustrate it, and we're going to ask you to guess which one it is. Without further ado, which species do you think this is? Now, if you go to Slido with that hashtag again, you will see a series of options. And the options are, I hope I'm not giving too much away because we can already see part of the picture. The options are a bearded vulture, Egyptian vulture, griffin vulture, black vulture, golden eagle, or red kite. 
And I have to say, I do know the answer now, but I didn't when I first saw the picture. So it is a beautiful illustration, but you do need to know your birds. And I hope our finalists all know what this is. So we're going to see, there you go, in full color as well. Let us see whether people were able to vote for the right answer. Oh, yes, indeed. 55, 57 or so percent of you got it right. It is indeed a bearded vulture. Well done. Let's hope our finalists got that right. No one thought it was a kite, and a very few of you thought it was an eagle. So at least we know the, uh, the species we're talking about. Let's get to know our first five finalists now for the nature category before we welcome our first esteemed jury member, President of the European Parliament, David Sassoli. But first, those finalists. We have Life Dinlap Bear, Life for Safe Grid, Life Orinia, Life Scaluvia, and Wolf Life. These are all, we can see you all give us a wave, joining from across Europe. <laughs> Very well done to all of you for becoming finalists. It's an achievement in itself to get so far. Let's now have a look at the videos describing their projects. Life Dinalp Bear. Life Dinalp Bear has put in place plans to manage and monitor brown bear populations in the northern Dineric Mountains and the southeastern Alps. Overall, there has been a 43% reduction in sheep attacks, while the number of bears being hit by traffic is also down by a quarter. Human bear conflicts are down due to the installation of electric fences, as well as bear proof compost and garbage bins. A bear-friendly label was developed to award practices that contribute to better coexistence between bears and humans. Attitudes towards bears have improved due to an extensive communication and information campaign. Life for SafeGrid Life for SafeGrid has increased the Imperial Eagle population in Bulgaria. Many of these birds were being needlessly killed by uninsulated electricity poles. The team behind the project identified around 5,000 hazardous electricity poles and insulated nearly half of them to protect the bird. Meanwhile, 69 kilometers of hazardous overhead power lines were replaced with underground cables. As a result of these measures, Imperial Eagle numbers are up by 10%. The new cables and lines have also seen fewer power outages and this means a more secure electricity supply for local communities and businesses. Public awareness of the bird and the dangers it faces has also risen significantly. Life Orinia Life Orinia has vastly improved the habitat of the marsh fritillary butterfly in the German state of Schleswig-Holstein. To this end, the project team converted 234 hectares of agriculture land into species-rich grasslands, an area the size of around 440 football fields. In addition, nine subpopulations of the endangered butterfly were reintroduced to the area. Several nectar plant species, meanwhile, were established for the marsh fritillary to feed and pollinate. For the project to leave a lasting legacy, a number of so-called after-life conservation plans were developed. Crucially, the international network of experts that were set up under the project will protect the marsh fritillary butterfly well into the future. Life Plus Galuvia The Life Plus Galuvia project has restored the alluvial forests and creeks at a river Scheldt estuary site near Antwerp in Belgium. Habitat restoration has re-established critical species there is now a healthy population of European bitterling, while European beaver use the site for breeding and purple heron for resting. The site now has a good conservation status and functions as an effective flood defense and recreational area. The project serves as a blueprint for similar initiatives. The team also developed a guide called 10 Keys to Project Co-Ownership, which gives valuable engagement tips that can be used by other projects.
Wolf Life. The Wolf Life project set out to maintain a viable wolf population in the Carpathian Mountains. To this end, the project team developed a national action plan for the wolf, which was subsequently approved by Romania's Environment Ministry. The team assessed the size of the wolf population and tracked the animals closely, monitoring the impact of poaching and minimizing the risk of habitat fragmentation. The results of the project include a rise in the wolf population and a better wolf-human coexistence. Through a public awareness campaign, the negative image of the species was lessened, with more emphasis being placed on the important role that wolves play in nature. Buon pomeriggio a tutti, è un grande onore far parte di questa giuria, anche se in modalità telematica, aver avuto la possibilità di vedere in anteprima questi cinque video di grande ispirazione per tutti noi e per la protezione di uno dei beni più preziosi che abbiamo, il nostro pianeta. Ho quindi il piacere di annunciare il vincitore della categoria Natura del programma Life di quest'anno. Come sapete tutti, lo scorso novembre il Parlamento europeo ha dichiarato che l'Europa e il mondo si trovano in un'emergenza climatica e ambientale che dobbiamo fare ogni sforzo per salvare il pianeta. Ci troviamo ad affrontare delle sfide senza precedenti, siamo consapevoli dell'importanza che rivestono programmi che fanno di questa battaglia uno dei loro obiettivi principali. Per questo non posso che guardare con ammirazione questo programma a livello europeo dedicato all'ambiente e all'azione per il clima. Da 28 anni il programma Life sostiene, seppur con dimensioni finanziarie limitate, progetti di alta qualità dedicati alla conservazione della natura, eh, la, conver la conversione ecologica delle nostre imprese, l'uso efficiente delle risorse. Le vostre proposte e i progetti realizzati sono la dimostrazione concreta della capacità e della determinazione dell'Europa di raggiungere obiettivi ambiziosi a livello ambientale e climatico. Non possiamo naturalmente tornare indietro. Abbiamo iniziato questa legislatura cercando di mettere a fuoco le priorità che oggi possono consentire di proteggere l'uomo, l'ambiente, promuovendo azioni che non tengano conto solo di uno sviluppo e di una crescita tesi al profitto, ma che si evolvano verso una dimensione umana e sostenibile. Il programma Life contribuisce anche a questo, perché promuove il pieno coinvolgimento di ampie fasce di cittadini, creando un legame con l'Europa. Le pubbliche amministrazioni, gli enti di ricerca, le imprese, tutti coloro che sono impegnati nei programmi LIFE traducono in azioni concrete, misurabili e replicabili gli obiettivi a sostegno del clima e della protezione ambientale. Chi partecipa ai progetti LIFE entra in contatto con esperienze di molte zone e di aree dell'Europa, confrontandosi con altre realtà che rendono concreto il progetto di un'Europa più forte, più unita, più verde, che si conosce meglio. La tutela dell'ambiente è il percorso che dobbiamo seguire per proteggere la biodiversità, il nostro pianeta, ma anche la nostra salute. Life si impegna a cofinanziare progetti che hanno come obiettivo la conservazione della natura, in particolare nei settori della biodiversità, degli habitat e delle specie. È stato molto difficile decidere il vincitore, i progetti dei finalisti avevano diversi punti di forza a partire dalla rilevanza e dalla portata delle misure proposte al notevole potenziale di innovazione e tutti tenevano conto delle priorità, le priorità chiave come i servizi ecosistemici. Il progetto vincitore mi ha colpito per il ruolo essenziale che riveste la cooperazione tra quattro stati membri il modo significativo in cui contribuisce alla politica di conservazione dell'Unione Europea e per il suo grande potenziale di replica in tutti i Paesi. Ho quindi il piacere di annunciare il vincitore per la categoria natura del programma LIFE di quest'anno. Il vincitore eh, è LIFE Dinalp Ber. Congratulazioni. Naturalmente speriamo che questo tempo così difficile che ci obbliga a eh, lavorare a distanza possa terminare e naturalmente eh, speriamo di poterci incontrare di persona al più presto. Congratulazioni. A 
very big congratulations to Like Dean out there. Thank you very much for joining us. You must be delighted. Uh, tell me, if you can, in, in just a minute, what this award means to you. Well, um, we are really pleased for this. Uh, we put really a great effort of uh, five years uh, work into this, and we are really, really happy um, that we get somehow confirmation that we really did a jo good job. So thank you very much. Uh, uh, Life uh, Instrument enabled us uh, to do this. It enabled us to good, make some good practices on the national level. It enabled us to make some good practices internationally. It's really difficult to get funding for the international work. So Life is really uh, helping with this. So uh, thank you very much that we had a chance to do it. Thank you. And as you heard the president say, that international cooperation was one of the reasons you won. And I love the flag in the background as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now, we're going to move on to the environment category. And a reminder, as always, keep your devices handy because we are going to use Slido. If you didn't enter the first time around, do go to slido.com or sli.do and enter the code LIFEAWARDS20. And remember, keep tweeting, keep sharing on social media. Keep mentioning we've got our first winner, but keep voting as well for the public choice winner. Now, before we see the five finalists and, and, and do our pop quiz, which is coming up, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about how important the environment is to the EU and its people. And I'm going to throw some big figures at you. There have been more than 2,700 projects with a total budget of 5.4 billion euros, of which 2.2 billion came directly from the EU. Now, these aren't the questions that are coming up in the pop quiz, <laughs> but I do want you to answer those questions. So go to Slido. There is an award for this, so please do put in your name so that we don't accidentally award Mr. or Mrs. Anonymous. Put in your nickname or your own name, and we will start. And we will have three questions, obviously all on our topics, and we'll give you about 45 minutes, 45 minutes, 45 seconds, sorry, to answer each question. So let's start with that first question that you will be able to see on Slido once you have put your name in. The first question in our pop quiz is which location has the cleanest air on earth now that's a lovely picture i think that might be a clue but it's uh, representing clean air <laughs> so you will have three options uh, to answer this question we're going to give you plenty of time as i say about 45 seconds which isn't enough time to go looking it up online i hope it's enough time for those of you who know just to click your answer in uh, the options are fiji lapland or Auckland. So uh, I don't know whether that picture is a big enough clue, but um, we're going to see in just a few seconds how you have voted and what the correct answer is. I hope it hasn't been just a total out of the blue guess. Let us see. Let's reveal. Oh, well, it's uh, clearly out in front. It is Lapland in Finland, and that is actually the correct answer. 71% of you got that correct. Very well done. Let's go on to our second pop quiz question, which will again be illustrated by a beautiful picture. In Europe, which of the following sectors reuses the highest share of treated wastewater? Uh, so this is just a Europe only question, not a global question. Uh, treated wastewater, which sector treats the most? So you have options, you have agriculture, you have industry, and you have household consumption. Now I'm sure our finalists know the answer to these. The question is whether you at home or in your offices from all across Europe can guess, or perhaps you have it to hand. There's a lot of pride at stake here in getting all these answers right. We are going to announce the name of the winner when we get to the third and final question. So let us see how many of you have voted and exactly how many of you got it right. Ooh, neck and neck. Well, no one really thought it was household consumption, um, and indeed it's not. Uh, but it was 41% for agriculture, 42% for industry. Agriculture was the correct answer, so just slightly fewer of you. That is an interesting outcome there. I'll, uh, I'll bear that in mind for discussion in future. 
And we will now go on to the third and final question in our pop quiz. And that is, what is the amount of waste recycled per capita in 2018 in the EU? So not last year, but the year before. And I suppose that's because those are the most recent figures. And the options are just figures. You have 178 kilograms per capita. You have 149 kilograms per capita. Or 233 kilograms per capita. And I must admit, I had no clue about this at all when I first saw the question. So let's see how many of you environmental experts got it right. We are going to let the countdown so you get your full 45 seconds in case you're debating between two of the possible options. Let's see what people voted for. Ooh, well, that is interesting. Most of you thought it was 140, uh, 178, with about 34% thinking it was only 149. But the correct answer was, 100, was 233. And only 23% of you got that correct which means that whoever is our winner has actually beaten the odds, and it wasn't just uh, everybody got all the questions right. I'm glad we weren't making it too easy for you. That's good to know. So let's have a look. Do we have our winners? Maria, and we've got the times. Well done, Maria. Sandra in second place, sadly no prizes. Anna, Toms, and Angelo. Well done, three out of three for all of you. So congratulations, Maria. Someone will be in touch to tell you what you win, aside, of course, from the honor and glory of winning the Life Awards 2020 pop quiz. Now, we're going to go on, and uh, let's see who our finalists are before we hear from our second jury member, Amboise Fayol from the European Investment Bank. Let's see our finalists for the environment category. Are you all there? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Give me a wave. <laughs> it's great to see you. We have Flaw, Flaw for Life. We have Life Cogeneration PL. We have Life Debug. We have Life Sure, and we have Wiser. So congratulations to all of you on getting to this final stage. I'm sure you don't want me to talk anymore because you want to hear who has won. But let's see a video explaining your projects first. Floor for life. A million tons of food is wasted every year in Portugal. Floor for life worked with farmers, delivery points, volunteers and students to change consumption habits, creating an alternative market for fruit and vegetables that were too small, too large or too ugly to sell in regular outlets. The project has reduced food waste by more than 2,300 tons to date. Floor for life also played a key part in the design of Portugal's national strategy to fight food waste. The project is now working with stakeholders worldwide, creating a network to combat food waste. And its methodology is being replicated as far afield as the Netherlands, the USA and Brazil. Live Cogeneration PL Life Cogeneration PL demonstrated a pioneering small-scale technology for producing energy and heat from municipal waste and sewage sludge. This waste has a high potential for energy recovery and volumes are increasing, but it usually goes to landfill, making up four-fifths of waste disposal in Poland. Life Cogeneration PL's technology provides a waste-to-energy solution for small and medium-sized municipalities supporting their implementation of the EU Waste Framework Directive. And it has the potential to create green jobs locally, with 10 to 15 new jobs for each installation. In the future, the solution will also be tested in Czechia, Slovakia, Hungary and Romania. Life de bag. In the EU, more than 8 million plastic bags end up as litter every year. Life de Bag raised awareness in Greece about plastic bag pollution in the marine environment, reaching around 600,000 people with its media campaign. Voluntary agreements to reduce plastic bag consumption were signed with 215 shops on the island of Cyrus and with Greece's major supermarket chains and an educational program was integrated in schools across the country. Thanks to the project, accumulation of plastic bags decreased by 80% on Cyrus's surveyed beaches and 60% on the seafloor. 
Its recommendations also led to a fee on single-use plastic bags in Greece. Life de Bag is now planning to establish an observatory on plastic marine litter on the Aegean Sea. Life Shore The Life Shore project developed a prototype for manufacturing eco-asphalt on site using reclaimed asphalt pavement as a raw material. Its eco-asphalts are cheaper than conventional ones and generate fewer carbon emissions while minimizing consumption of natural resources. LifeShore's technology also gives better conditions for construction workers, with temperatures half those of conventional asphalts. A public-private collaboration, the project paved 18,000 square meter with eco-asphalt, an area the size of around 70 tennis courts. 10 cities across the EU have been identified for potential replication of this project. Wiser Life Wiser Life demonstrated the reuse and retrofit of a disused boiler house building in Ballymun, a suburb of Dublin. The industrial building was transformed into an educational 3D textbook, demonstrating a new methodology for education in sustainable development. And it is also home to an eco-cluster of resource-efficient social enterprises. Overall, the project is a living lab for the circular economy and collaborative projects. A social value of more than 2 million euros was created through new jobs and vocational courses. Besides, over the project lifetime, 54.9 tonnes of waste were diverted from landfill, equivalent to the weight of 30 cars. Well received locally, Wiser Life is a best practice example of waste reuse in building construction and renovation to support socio-economic regeneration in the EU. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. After watching these fantastic videos, it is now my pleasure to announce the winner of the Environment category of the LIFE Awards this year. As you may know, environmental sustainability is a key priority for us at the EIB, the EU Climate Bank, particularly in the context of our new climate and environmental ambition and the EU Green Deal. As such, I am particularly honored for the EIB to be part of the jury. LIFE co-finances projects in the environmental sector covering a broad range of areas such as waste, water, air, circular economy, marine and coastal management, just to name a few. This is beautifully illustrated by the diversity of projects that made it to the final selection. First of all, I have to emphasize that all these initiatives are just excellent. I was amazed by the huge variety of issues tackled and the innovative solutions proposed. All the projects made a substantial impact on the ground and present high level of social engagement and innovation, a true source of inspiration for the citizens and stakeholders who took part in these projects, as well as other similar initiatives across the European Union. Two projects clearly stood out in terms of their general impact and level of stakeholder engagement. Both of them tackled issues that are very close to the everyday lives of our citizens, contributing to their reach, scale and replicability. What convinced us in the final decision was the socio-economic impact and the outreach and involvement of the more vulnerable members of our communities, thereby illustrating the multiple synergies and linkages between climate, environment and social objectives. So, the winner of the category Environment is the Flow for Life project in Portugal. Bravo to them, bravo to all, and I thank you. Flow for Life, very well done. <laughs> That's the sort of reaction we want to see. Fantastic there. <laughs> um, so, um, we've seen the video about your project. Can you tell me just briefly what was the most fulfilling aspect of it? Uh, uh, well, it's very difficult to say, but uh, when uh, we got this grant, we were a very little co-op fighting for waste due to appearance. And uh, with our Fluff Life projects, 
We created uh, eight new jobs, launched eight uh, new delivery points. Right now, more than 6,000 consumers are enjoying the ugly produce, produce of uh, more than 250 farmers. Um, until now, we have already saved two tons and 500 tons of ugly fruit and vegetables. So these awards uh, means to us not only the recognition of our results, uh, but it also proves that uh, our model works. A sustainable model, uh, model uh, based on uh, consumers' commitment. So thank you, life. Yeah. You made us stronger. Thank you very much. That is fantastic enthusiasm. That's what we want to see from everyone. And of course, well done to the other finalists as well, but especially well done to Flaw for Life. Now we are going to move on to our climate category, the third of our three main categories this year. And once again, you're all experts by now. It's Keep your device handy because we're going to do a warm up on Slido. Remember to use that hashtag Life Award 20. So let me give you some figures for the climate situation. Tackling climate change obviously can happen in all sorts of ways, from reducing greenhouse gas emissions to helping farm farming and forestry adapt and improving communities' resilience to extreme weather events. Together, 69 life climate change mitigation projects and 68 life climate change adaption projects benefit from a total budget of 369 million euros, with 204 million of that coming directly from the EU. So we're talking about what the effects we think should happen. The projects and the finalists have worked hard on the effects they think are needed. But now we're going to ask you, the audience from all around the world, to vote on Slido for what you think is most important for Europe to become climate neutral. This is an open form. This is just whatever you want to put in. We're going to create a word cloud. So we're going to take your thoughts and words and present them visually. So try to keep it short. Pick one strong word that you think sums up what really needs to happen. And I'm sure many of you will pick the same words, but also try to be a little bit inventive. So your top priority on the climate change effect to be addressed for the EU to become climate neutral by 2050. Again, try to avoid those long sentences. And while you're doing that and racking your brains for some creativity, let's have a look at a short video. This is you. This is our homes, our cities, our lives and livelihoods. And this is climate change. It's here. It's happening right now. What will happen if we act? If we limit global warming to well below two degrees, how will people, the economy, and ecosystems in Europe benefit? Two thirds of the increase in people exposed to high wildfire danger would be avoided. Two thirds of the increase in deaths from heat waves would be avoided. The impacts of coastal and river flooding would be more than halved and stress on ecosystems and habitats would be considerably lower. The drop in water resources availability and drought losses in southern regions would be halved. And if we also adapt to climate change, we can reduce impacts even further. Adaptation can have long-lasting benefits for our people, economy, and our ecosystems. Well, that video there is showing us the huge benefits to be reaped from mitigation and adaptation. And here we see the word cloud about what you, our dear audience today, think is most important for Europe to become climate neutral. Absolutely, awareness, CO2 reduction and degrowth, as well as things like forests, bikes, sustainable energy, reducing consumption, reducing pollution, health, transportation, buildings, clean energy. A huge number of suggestions there. Citizen engagement as well. I know a lot of citizens are tuned in today to engage with us. So without further ado, let's move on to our third main award of today. 
in the climate category. We're going to get to know our finalists before we hear from our final jury member, Luciana Mew from Imperial College London. So, hello finalists. Thank you very much for joining. Give us all a wave. Uh, we have Fire Life, we have Life Carbon Dairy, we have Life Hero Tile, we have Life Remida, and we have Life Peatland Use. Very well done to all of you. Now let's cue your video. Fire Life. Climate extremes, less precipitation, higher temperatures and a series of winters without snow have increased the incidence of forest fires in Hungary. Fire Life improved forest fire prevention by providing teachers, social workers, farmstead caretakers and forest fire prevention experts with targeted information. The Fire Life team participated in 60 events, reaching more than 80% of the Hungarian population. Thanks to the project, the number of forest fires decreased by nearly a third and the size of area burned by 70 to 90 percent. Other countries with the same problem can follow Fire Life's checklist for developing fire prevention systems, tools and innovative ways of involving stakeholders. Life Carbon Dairy Life Carbon Dairy promoted a new and innovative approach to milk production that could cut greenhouse gas emissions from the sector by up to 20% over 10 years. The project team assessed more than 3,900 farms in France using a specially developed tool for calculating carbon emissions. As a result, CO2 in these farms dropped by 127,000 tonnes, which is equivalent to the yearly emissions of some 90,000 cars. The team also developed a climate roadmap that can be used by the entire dairy sector. In addition, the project's findings are now being used by the beef farming industry, with sheep farmers expected to follow suit. Life Hero Tile Life Hero Tile designed and produced two new types of clay roof tile, which can passively remove heat. This reduces the energy used for cooling buildings by up to 50%, with a related decrease in greenhouse gas emissions and air pollution. The innovative tiles have great potential to help mitigate climate change in the Mediterranean. The project also developed a new software tool for assessing the cooling performance of roofs. The Live Hero Tile team plans to replicate the project at EU level by working with brick and roof associations. This can help the construction sector achieve its targets on energy efficiency and CO2 emissions, while encouraging market uptake of EU eco-innovative products. One of the designs can be currently found in the market as Aerotile. Life Remida Organic matter in landfilled sites generates biogas during decomposition a major challenge for climate change mitigation. Life Remeda demonstrated the viability of two technologies for treating this gas to reduce its contribution to the greenhouse effect. The technologies tested achieved high efficiency rates of 80 to 90% when treating methane and reducing odors. They can also reduce the cost of landfill post-treatment by around one to two thirds. Life Remeda's success prompted a revision of Italy's implementation of the EU Landfill Directive in order to overcome barriers preventing the use of these technologies. If widely applied, they have great potential to reduce methane emissions at EU level. Life Peatland Use Peatlands, a unique ecosystem's home to many rare and threatened species found nowhere else. They regulate our climate by storing massive amounts of carbon. Despite their high environmental, economic and social importance, peatlands continue to be destroyed. To counter this decline in Finland, the Life Peatland Use project team looked at the direct and indirect contributions of peatlands to human well-being. These so-called ecosystem services included water, food, fuel and recreation. The team's work is helping planners and policymakers 
make sustainable decisions on land use. Findings show that harvesting tree biomass provides income to farmers while helping biodiversity on peatlands recover. The project's approach is ideal for land use planning in other countries. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us at the 2020 Life Awards Ceremony. After watching these five fantastic finalist project videos, it is my pleasure to present the winner of this year's Climate Action category of the awards. Climate change is the great challenge of our time and of times yet to come. Our future generations will need to accelerate and scale up efforts to mitigate and adapt to climate change. As such, the efforts of the European Union to stimulate game-changing initiatives to address climate change are crucial to set the scene for the climate action of tomorrow. And the LIFE program does exactly this. It co-finances projects in climate change mitigation, such as renewable energies or sustainable land use, and climate change adaptation, such as safeguarding natural resources and resilience to hazards. What's a range of challenges and diversity of solutions, which is exactly what we've seen in this year's Climate Action Category finalist project. It was a privilege for me to be invited to be part of this jury and to be blown away by the quality and impact of the finalist projects, all of which made significant contributions to addressing climate change. They developed new products and applied key measures within a wide scope of activities. They engaged national and international stakeholders with meaningful collaboration, and they set the scene for future policy developments to further enhance climate action across Europe. One project in particular stood out for this jury. Its stakeholder involvement was incredible, reaching over 80% of their national population, engaging a range of EU entities and fostering cooperation between three member states. Their methods are easily replicable, offering potential to scale up efforts in what is a crucial area of climate change adaptation, forest fire prevention. Without further ado, the winner of the climate action category is Fire Life from Hungary. Congratulations to them. Congratulations to all life projects for the impact on our shared sustainable future. Thank you all. Merci beaucoup. Very well done. Uh, you must be delighted. Now is your one minute in the spotlight. Do tell us what the award means to you. Oh, Daniel? Daniel, I don't think we can hear you. Have you got your microphone on mute? <laughs> this is the new story of all our lives. If we hadn't said it once, it wouldn't have yeah, been. Can you hear me? We can now, yes. Oh, okay. Congratulations. <laughs> and congratulations on your microphone as well. <laughs> Give me a very quick 30-second uh, sum up of what the award means to you. Yeah, thank you very much for the life. Uh, many people think that forest fires are nature disasters, but actually uh, it's a human caused disasters um, and it's very important to prevent the fire. It's much better for the people, for the social uh, uh, life and our life projects work as a catalyst by communicating with the building connection between the different target groups and stakeholders and which led to a 60% drop of forest fire incidents. And I would like to thanks for everybody. It's a great honor. Um, it was a, a very good shortlist as there are many very impressive life projects in Europe. And I would like to thank for, for my colleagues, for, for the foresters, firefighters, and nature professionals, and uh, for the whole um, Hungarian country and us or visitors because everybody helped us to prevent forest fires. Thank you very much. We're delighted for you as well and thank you for mentioning the other finalists. Now, keep your Slido handy because uh, we are going to, we, we've been keeping an eye on you and keeping you busy on Slido, bo, Slido, but keep your devices handy because I know you've been tweeting as well and we're going to take a look at that. But I want to remind you that you're in the last couple of minutes to vote for the Life Awards. I'm going to just take a quick check in on Twitter there, as you can see, people using that hashtag and commenting and congratulating our many very well-deserving winners, as well as name-checking the finalists. Now, 
As I said, we are on to that Citizens Prize Award, so uh, people have been tweeting about that as well. Now, I don't know if we can see a final countdown. Yes, we are in the final seconds of the voting. Uh, I hope you have all had a chance to vote. We have had some excellent finalists this year, and we say a very well done to all of them. Um, but we have also got to let everyone, and at the end of the day, there is going to be a winner in order to keep everyone focused. We are in six, five, four, three, two, one. We are going to reveal the winner. And it is my pleasure to allow you to do that. Joanna Drake, Deputy Director General for Environment, who will introduce the award. Hello, everybody. Public opinion polls consistently show how deeply concerned European citizens are for the environment and climate. The most important issues dear to their heart are the pollution of air and water, the generation of waste, biodiversity loss, and also the loss of natural resources. Indeed, citizens are also very vocal about their concerns, and I'm sure you have heard about the multitude of protests, especially by young people. And I'm sure you agree with me too, that we cannot leave these unheard. Life has always been a program that is very close to European citizens. Indeed, in the remotest parts of Europe, I would say that life is the only program that actually brings a link with the European Union. It shows the European Union in action. It actually fleshes out a connection between the European Union and citizens' life and their environment. Life projects have traditionally always engaged people. They have brought people together. They have brought them to act together like a community. Indeed, Many of life projects depend on volunteers, on the action taken by volunteers. They're all acting towards a common purpose. Let's take the example, for instance, of the removal of invasive alien species, or the example of animals that have been reintroduced and the monitoring of these animals by citizens. Volunteering builds and reinforces communities. It also has a very positive effect on mental health. This is what the Life Citizens Prize means. It is very important because it brings people together. It is a people's prize. We want to hear you and we want to know what your opinion is. Your opinion really matters. Many of you have already voted for your personal favourite project. Well, I know I have. And I think we're all very curious to know who has won which project has convinced the majority of you? It is time to get to know that, here and now, in real time. So please, reveal the winner of the Life Citizens Prize. Mm -hmm. Well, you were excited first time around, ladies. I can see you're even more excited now that you've won the Citizens' Choice Prize <laughs> Award. There you go. The judges not only loved you, but also the public as well thought you were doing great work. What's your, what's your reaction? I think we can see by your faces. <laughs> Would you like to say a couple of words? Or you, you must be pleased. What was it about your project that captured the imagination, do you think? Um... I think Flow for Life projects uh, demonstrate that people can uh, come together and stand up as a community to solve this major problem of food waste due to appearance. Um, and so I think this, uh, uh, this prize acknowledges our work uh, regarding that. Uh, so it makes us uh, really proud 
Thank you very much. Well done again, ladies. That was fantastic work. Now, that was our, our scheduled awards, but we have a last minute surprise for you. The awards aren't quite over yet. We have a final special award dedicated to projects that have adapted in these unprecedented times. So to explain more, I would like to welcome with me here in Brussels, Angelo Salci, Head of Unit Life and SIP Eco Innovation at ASME in the European Commission. I'm going to hand it over to you to explain what this award is all about. Thank you. So it's really a pleasure to be here. Uh, we, what did we want to do with this uh, special award? Difficult time, COVID time, here in front of us there are only empty chairs, uh, unfortunately. But out there we knew that there were people that uh, uh, took action the day after the COVID crisis exploded. And some of, our, of those were our beneficiaries. So we tried to capture this action and this initiative that they took and uh, we uh, crystallized it in a list of projects and uh, initiatives that were taken. You can see the pictures uh, uh, browsing through while I'm talking. Uh, we collected more than 20 different projects that did something special for COVID, uh, well, not for COVID, to help us fight against COVID and adapt to COVID. And uh, out of these many uh, initiatives, we had things like networking of people, allowing teachers uh, to be able to teach while still being uh, in, a re in remote conditions, uh, uh, capturing the quality of uh, air uh, while these things were happening, uh, sharing uh, cars that were bought for, uh, for the life project but were not used anymore in that moment, but they could be uh, helpful for the Red Cross or any other uh, local initiative. So all these uh, projects uh, did something. They printed masks, uh, they, w they went on the field, uh, and uh, they showed that human beings, even in the most dreadful situation, they can find ways to make the best out of it. They also showed that the LIFE program is and remain a very flexible program. We allowed all these things to happen, and we are proud that they happened, even though they might have been a bit out of the original scope of the project. And now my task is to announce for you the uh, winner, who is, yes, it's the winner, but it wins, this project wins for all the other projects that we could not reward. And the winner is the Life Prepare Integrated Project. And we have, I think, Katia Raffaelli with us to receive this, uh, this award and to tell us what she feels uh, and uh, what she thinks about it. Katja, well done. Congratulations. What does it mean to you? Tell us a little bit. Uh, in, in, a, in one minute, tell us how important this is. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm really honoured to receive this important award on behalf of all the Life Prepare team. The COVID-19 pandemic gave us the opportunity, unfortunately, to make an experiment, a big experiment, a real test in the Po Valley and in Slovenia on some of the measures usually addressed to reduce air pollution and to measure, to evaluate the effects of these measures on air quality. And uh, let's uh, think to the traffic flow, for example, in the Po Valley that have been reduced due to like, not lockdown measures up to 80%. Uh, percent. And um, through, through the uh, tools uh, implemented by Life EP Prepare, we had the opportunity to evaluate in a concrete way the effect of these uh, lockdown measures. The results of PREPARE are also in use by other important projects in Italy and in Europe uh, in order to um, study the link between uh, the COVID pandemic and uh, air pollution. So again, thank you very much. We are very honoured and we'll continue to study on this matter. And uh, thank you very, very much. 
Thank you very much, Katja, and a very well done to you. And thank you also to Angelo for those inspiring words that despite difficult times, unprecedented times, that by working together across Europe, we can still have a positive impact for ourselves and for future generations. That is the end of our prizes. So it just remains to me to thank everyone involved in contributing to the 2020 Life Awards, particularly our tech team, without whom this would not have been possible digitally across all of Europe. We want to thank our esteemed jury members for their hard work. I want to thank you for watching and for voting in that public prize. Of course, we also want to thank the European Commission and the organizers, as well as our media partners, Euronews. Do keep an eye on their website, as there will be a features highlighted showreel in the coming days. You will also be able to find videos of the event on the Life Awards website. And finally, of course, a very well done to all the finalists in all the categories, particularly all the winners. And of course, that a special adapting to COVID-19 awardee for going above and beyond the call of duty. That's it for this year. I do hope you will keep tweeting about it, keep spreading the word and join us again next year. Well done, one and all, from the Life Awards 2020. Thank you.